So we know that bladder sparing trimodality therapy is an effective treatment for muscle invasive bladder cancer, and so I'll be talking about some of the novel therapeutics and highlighting, I'm gonna be highlighting some of the um, the incorporation of those novel therapeutics with radiation therapy to try to improve upon our current outcomes. So essentially, we know that, again, um, trimodality therapy has excellent outcomes in comparison to radical cystectomy in terms of you know uh, clinical outcomes. And uh, I'll be presenting some data. There's some data showing that functionally and from a quality of life perspective, patients do very well uh, with trimodality therapy, which is, which is excellent. Um, we want to improve upon those outcomes, and so there's been a lot of interest with a combining immunotherapy with um, trimodality therapy, specifically with the radiation therapy. There's a lot of data showing that if you combine immunotherapy with radiation, they actually work synergistically and um, effectively we can, we can hopefully improve upon our clinical outcomes such as survival data, um, bladder intact uh, um, survival data, disease specific survival data, etc. Um, so uh, I'll be talking a little bit about how there's multiple trials, uh, specifically the NRG the 1806 trial is one of the largest trials where we're randomizing patients um, to plus or minus a tezolizumab um, in addition with the with the you know standard of care which is the trimodality therapy and that's going to be a very rich amount of data because we'll really understand how immunotherapy may improve upon um, outcomes for for muscle invasive for with patients with muscle invasive bladder cancer and in addition it's going to provide us a, a, a wealth of data that we can look at you know we're looking at different biomarkers and we're going to do lots of translational studies you know see if we can identify patients that may benefit from bladder sparing therapy with or without immunotherapy things like that um, in terms of another area of interest for uh, bladder sparing therapy um, there's a lot of remaining questions with regards to it especially with regards to like field size dose fractionation size things like that and so there's been a big movement towards hypofractionation and hypofractionated radiation therapy basically giving a larger dose of, of radiation per day to try to shorten the treatment duration. Um, it's been shown to be very effective in patients uh, without the immunotherapy, but there's been some early data that I'll be talking about um, that do show that there's there appears to be increased toxicities when we use hypofractionated radiation therapy in combination with immunotherapy. These are very early, this is very early data, so we need to kind of further understand and tease out, you know, what could be go on, going on um, in particular in those early studies of just a small amount of patients, there was an increase, particularly in look like in, in GI toxicities when combining with the immunotherapy and using hypofractionated radiation. So in that NRG SWOG 1806 trial, um, we don't actually use uh, hypofractionated radiation therapy. We use standard, um, uh, standard conventional fractionation for radiation therapy, but that's an area of interest. There's actually other trials that are opening up trying to understand that question of, you know, if you combine immunotherapy with radiation, what is safe, you know, what's the appropriate dose, can you do the hypofractionated, you know, who has these toxicities, et cetera. So that's kind of an area of, um, um, of research that's kind of coming down the pipeline, so we need to kind of further understand that. And then finally, um, I do touch a, a little bit upon adaptive radiation therapy, so that's a big area in our field where uh, we can actually adapt on a daily basis the radiation treatments um, uh, using software and, and not novel technology to actually change a patient's plan. And this is important in bladder cancer because bladder, you know, when you treat the bladder, there's a lot of critical organs that are nearby and we want to reduce toxicity and reduce, ra reduce radiation dose to those nearby organs. So there's a large study that's actually evaluating that very question using adaptive treatment for when you're treating the, the bladder. Um, so that'll provide a lot more um, information. And that may actually be a key when wanting to hypofractionate in combination with immunotherapy. They're not doing that right now, but that is probably coming down the pipeline line as well because that may be a novel way to really reduce the treatment field so we're just treating you know the, the bladder tumor or boosting the bladder tumor that we absolutely need to, to treat um, and then you know safely reduce dose to some of those nearby organs especially when in combination with immunotherapy where we did see those uh, side effects.